Greetings DCS community and welcome back to my channel. Today we're in the F-16 Viper and we're going to cover a topic that I've seen pop up from time to time on the Eagle Dynamics forums and that's how the lighting operates in the Viper and why it's just a little bit different than the other American fighters. So stay tuned. Let's look at the controls. The landing light and taxi light are controlled by the switch on the left vertical console and will only light when the landing gear is down and locked. These lights will automatically turn off when the gear is in transit or up regardless of the switch setting. All other lights are controlled with the exterior lighting control panel so let's take a closer look at that. The lighting panel is located on the left side console just to the left of the pilot. The master mode knob is the center switch on the bottom row and it controls the visibility of all the lights. It can be set to off which will disable all the lights. The next three position controls the covert lights which can only be seen with night vision goggles. From left to right we have covert all in which the covert tail strobe position and fuselage lights will be used. Covert anti-collision which will only use the tail strobe and covert formation which will only use the position and fuselage lights. Finally, there is the norm position in which all lights can be visible. The anti-collision switch at the top left of the panel controls the tail strobe on top of the vertical stabilizer and has eight positions. Off, 1 through 4, Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie. Off is self-explanatory. 1 through 4 are the settings for when the tail strobe is visible and determines how many times the strobe will flash each time it fires. In my example, In my example here on screen, it is set to position 2. Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie are only used when the lighting master mode is set for covert lighting. Forward of the anti-collision switch are two toggle switches that work together and those are the position lights. The wing and tail lights are the red and green lights out on the wingtips. The two mounted on each side of the engine intake and lastly a rearward facing white light mounted at the base of the vertical stabilizer. They can be set to flash or steady, as well as bright, dim, or off. The last toggle switch is the fuselage lights, which are a set of four white lights. There are two at the back of the aircraft, which illuminate the sides of the tail. Another one along the spine of the aircraft, facing rearward, which serves double duty as a fuselage light, and is the light used to assist the boom operator for nighttime aerial refueling, which lights up the refueling receptacle. The last light is located on the belly of the aircraft. These lights can only burn steady and will not flash even if the wing tail lights are set to flash. The aerial refueling knob controls how bright the light is that lights up the top of the fuselage. This light will turn on any time the refuel door is set to open and is the only time that this knob will control the light's brightness. When the door is closed, that light will follow the fuselage switch settings. Lastly, we have the formation knob and is the knob that has caused the most confusion for players new to the Viper. The formation lights in the Viper are unlike any of the other modern American aircraft. The A-10 Warthog, F-A-18 Hornet, and the F-14 Tomcat, for example, have a specific and separate set of lights for nighttime formation flight, which are also known as slime lights. The Viper is not equipped with any slime lights and has to use the existing wing, tail, and fuselage lights as its formation lights. The formation knob functions as a dimmer and will directly control the brightness of the lights. By design, the setting of the formation knob will override the toggle switch settings for the position and fuselage lights. I will note that the flash and steady switch will still toggle the state of the position lights respectively. Here on screen you can see the lights lit with only the formation knob turned up. This is the part that usually catches people off guard as the toggle switches can be set to off, yet the lights are still lit. This function is not explained in the DCS Viper manual. When performing a cold start, take off from ramp, or already airborne in a mission, the Viper's default settings has the formation knob set to full on and the anti-collision light set to one. In my opinion, both of these should be set to off for a cold start and will allow the player more direct control over the lights on the Viper and is something to be aware of for all other situations. I hope you all enjoyed and learned something from this. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all next time.